I was advised that I did not have a legal right to obtain a copy of my parents' marriage certificate. My mother has that legal right, as would my dad if he was still alive, but sadly he left us far too early. I want to explain to the House why I can't obtain a copy of my parents' marriage certificate. It's a complex and a traumatic story, a story that I don't usually share. One day when I was around six years old, my mum dropped me off at school and she never came back to pick me up. I don't remember every detail of what happened afterwards. I remember lots of tears. I remember lots of confusion. I remember my dad trying to explain. I remember some time later, dad taking me to the train station late one evening to collect my mother. I thought she was going to come home. The train came, the train went, no sign of her, so we went home. Then one day I remember going outside the front of the mill gates. We lived on the mill grounds at Mackay in North Queensland. I remember there being a small store and a petrol bowser out the front. A car turned up. I think it was a Tirana. It's funny how these little things stick in your mind, isn't it? I remember that part. My mother got out. Words were exchanged and then my mother drove away. My dad was now a single parent, an amazing man whose example I try and live up to every day of my life. Mm -hmm. Now my mother wasn't at my seventh birthday, the birthday after that. She wasn't there to help when I brought my fourth son home from hospital to meet his brothers. She wasn't there for my school graduation. She wasn't there for my youngest son grad graduation just last year when he was 17. In fact, they have never met. She wasn't there to help me campaign. She wasn't there to celebrate when we won or support me when I needed it. Many years ago, we made an attempt to build a relationship, but regrettably, that failed. Now, I don't know what was going on in my mum's life back then. I don't know when she dropped me off and never came back what was going on. I don't know what's going on in her life now. I have no idea. The fact is, we don't have a relationship. I imagine she carries her share of pain and trauma. And if it's anything like mine, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I don't speak about this trauma. Some friend people ask me why I couldn't just call my mother. Well, this is why, and I hope this story gives you the answer. I'd rather not share this with my closest friends, let alone the Parliament of Australia. But telling people it was deeply personal circumstances wasn't enough for the political attacks to back off. So now it's being said. And the good people of my electorate of Longman, well, they need to hear it. The fact is, my mum is not around to grant me access to her marriage certificate. And dad, he passed away nearly 20 years ago and spent the decade before that unable to care for himself and in need of 24 hour care. These are not things I find easy to relive. Speaker, this is not a story to gain sympathy. I don't speak out of hatred for my mother. I carry hurt, I carry disappointment. It's fair to say that I probably still carry a fair bit of anger. What this story is, it's about explaining as simply as I can that that extra document that UK Home Office requested after they received my renunciation, my parents' marriage certificate, is a document I was advised I do not have a legal entitlement to obtain. So I would simply ask those opposite, take a moment and think about the circumstances. 
Think about the consequences of a tax like this on my family. My family, like so many other families who are studying, who are working, working weekends and nights, my family who work hard, pay their fair share of tax, they're single parents, my family who are tradies and hospitality workers, my family, like every other family in my community, are good people. They are good people and they do not deserve to have the media digging through their lives or turning up or turning up on their doorsteps. Yes, I put my hand up for public life, but they didn't. These attacks have caused pain and opened up wounds that have never healed. Wounds inflicted on a very confused six-year-old little girl. I've fought that pain my whole life, but I can tell you now there are bigger fights I care about, and that's why I'm here. And that's the fight I want to continue on behalf of the people of Longman. In December last year, I voted yes to end uncertainty. This parliament had over a number of members in this house. I did this confident in more than 40 pages of evidence of reasonable and necessary steps I took. Knowing that a letter from the UK HO advising they could not be satisfied that I'm a British citizen has been disclosed. Thank you. And knowing that three independent barristers, including a retired Justice of the Federal Court of Australia, have resoundingly agreed that I took all reasonable steps to renounce my citizenship and that I was validly elected to Parliament and am eligible to sit in this House, I remain confident I took all reasonable steps to renounce my citizenship and nothing will change. Everything to see has been shown, except now. I've been forced to rip that band-aid off a very painful story, painful to me and painful to my family. Mr Speaker, the simple fact is not all families look like the Australian version of Little House on the Prairie, let me tell you. In fact, most don't. Families are complex. They face challenges. And sometimes, just sometimes, for whatever reason, they're just like mine. Thank you.